Hello and welcome back. I'm your friendly neighborhood technician. Sorry, it's been a few months, but I've been waiting for a new project to show up, which was a project in itself because it's, it's a whole long story that I will tell you right now trying to get to this new project. So about two months ago, I ordered this new project and he said it would be about 10 to 14 business days. Actually, it was October 30th is when I ordered it. So I gave it the 10 to 14 business days and it didn't show up. So I called the company back and was like, hey, what's up? Where's this, um, you know, it, didn't, it never got delivered. So um, they were like, uh, well, they're having issues with shipping, yada, 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 stuff like that. So I gave it, you know, another week, something like that, called them back. Uh, oh, we're still having issues with the shipping. We're trying to get it shipped out of here. It's just sitting on a pallet. It's been cleaned and it's been sitting on a pallet. So the first time I called them back after waiting after the uh, 10 to 14 business days, they said, oh, somebody will, somebody will, um, they'll email you and they'll, they'll get, you know, figure out what's going on with that. Okay. Never got an email. Never. So I waited till the next week. That was on a Friday when I talked to them. And they're like, oh, they, got, they took my number that time. And they're like, oh, somebody's going to call you. Nobody ever called me. So uh, I waited again and. So then I gave it another week and called it back and guess what? Still sitting on a pallet. The company that I'm talking to is in Wisconsin, so it's a little bit too far for me to drive. So I gave it a little bit longer and called them back. It's like, you know what? Hey, what's going on with this? It's, it's been a while. You guys have said it's going to be 10 to 14 business days. It's been now double that. So, you know, what's going on? Uh, so they said, oh, we, we're not sure. You know, we're, we're gonna, the, the shipping manager is handling it now. So. I called the shipping manager, didn't answer his phone, so uh, left him a message, never got back. So then I waited for the shipping manager to call me back, he never did, so I called them back again and uh, asked for the shipping manager. And So I called about 2, 3, 2 15, I think it was, 2 15 here, and they said that the shipping manager wasn't in and that he would be back in in about 45 minutes. So I called back in about 45 minutes. Uh, to the on the dot so it was actually I called back at 3 o'clock here and they're like oh he's gone for the day so um, which didn't make sense because they said he'd be back but he had just left uh, because they had, it's been it was 501 at that time and he has already gone for the day so I called back the next day and I called back I think it was right when I got to work so it was about 8 o'clock and they said that he wasn't even in yet so um, I called back they said he'd be in about 10 and uh, so I called back again and was there 10 I called him back at 10 o'clock and still didn't answer and they said that uh, he hadn't shown up yet so I asked her I was like what time what, what, when are, they, what are these guys hours when, when does this shipping manager work because 10 to 5 that's a pretty saucy schedule there so um, again didn't answer that one so I got fed up at that point and I called uh, I called him back and, and uh, but I called, called, went to a different extension I went to um, uh, warrant, uh, the warranty extensions to talk to somebody different and explain my situation with them and I explained I was like I keep getting dodged by the shipping manager he's supposed to be handling my uh, my my order and figure out where it is and how to get it sent to me so I asked them I said I don't want to talk to I don't want to talk to shipping anymore because they're not helping me I, they haven't been helping me for the past few weeks and I'm not getting anywhere with them. So she was kind enough to transfer me to shipping. So I hung up with them, uh, called sales back, talked to a different person this time, explained the situation again to them, and he transferred me to shipping. But he transferred me to the shipping manager. And guess who answered the phone when he wasn't expecting my call? The shipping manager. And I asked him, I was like, hey, so I guess, I, I was like, you're the one that's, uh, he's like, he gave me his name and I was like, you, and I gave him his last name back. I was like, is that you? He's like, yeah. He's like, and I was like, you're the shipping manager. He's like, well, I'm not really the manager. I was like, well, everybody's saying you're the shipping manager. He's like, well, I'm just a, I'm just a forklift operator. I was like, you don't manage anything? And he said, well, I do, I do manage some stuff. And I was like, so you're the shipping manager. And sorry, there's a train. There's some noise. Sorry about that. Anyway, so um, he was like, oh, I think DC is uh, handling that. So I'm like, I don't know who DC is. I don't know if that's distribution center, if that's somebody's name, or if that's another company. I don't know who's um, who's handling that. So uh, um, 
then he was like, I'll, I'll get them to, um, I'll get them to get a hold of you. And so I was like, all right. So I waited a little bit longer. So then I finally got an email from a place called DC Motors that was in Las Vegas, which got me excited because I was like, well, maybe I can drive to go pick this up, you know, instead of having to wait for somebody to, uh, to ship it and, you know, figure out where it is. So he called and he's like, we're having, you know, staffing issues, we're having stuff, which, which is fine. I understand that. Um, and he was like, I'll, I'll get, get an update. So I waited a few more days, no update. So I emailed him back. He said, we're still working on it. All right. Gave it a few more days. Emailed him back, still working on it. All right. So, um, I even offered in this, in this time to drive, to go pick it up. I was like, I was like, if you're in Vegas, you're emailing me from Vegas. If the, if what I want is in Vegas, I'll drive to come pick it up. That's fine. Or if it's in one of the surrounding states, I'm in Southern California, I will arrange to come pick it up. And he never responded to that. And, um, I don't know why I was trying, you know, would have made my life easier, would have made his life easier. You know, he didn't have to worry about shipping it. So then a week and a few more emails back and forth with DC Motors. He says, oh, I have, it, it's sitting here. I, I, it's, it's ready to be shipped today. This was Thursday, the last Thursday. And the new ETA is Monday, which is today, 12-12. And I'll get a, an, uh, I'll get a tracking number. So I didn't want a bug, so what I did was I waited until today, and I emailed him this morning when I got to work, and I was like, hey, um, just want to make sure we're still okay for, for it to be delivered today. And then 30 minutes later, I get a tracking number, and then I was tracking it, and it showed up. And this is what it is. This is an M120. 92 M120, to be exact, from a 600 SEL. It's a six liter. I'm basically going to do the same thing that I did to the 119 too. I'm going to take it apart completely and basically rebuild it, reseal every single sealable part, and then get it back together and figure out what I'm going to put it in. Because right now I don't know what I'm going to put it in. I'm not sure yet. So um, it didn't come with all the mass airflow sensors, which I know are not available, and it didn't come with that. It didn't come with um, the uh, air cleaners, none of that stuff, uh, didn't come with the computers, of which there are two, didn't come with either of those, or anything like that. So let's, I'm going to open this real quick. Okay, here it is, unwrapped, like a Christmas present. Missing the cover that goes right here, that says Mercedes-Benz on it. Surprisingly, this harness doesn't really look crispy. It looks kind of okay. It's not like the 119 harness that I had that, I don't know what that's about. But anyway, now the 119 harness was trash. So, uh, but this one, I'll have to see if any are available. Hopefully they are, maybe, maybe they are, I don't know, I'm not sure. But if they are, I'll probably end up getting one of those too. Well, one thing I did notice is these lines are kinked, the lines for the cooler right there or they go from the oil filter housing right here you can see they're kinked pretty bad so these are those are gonna have to get replaced or depending on what that what I put this in maybe I can flare that and put a fitting on there something like that I'm not sure but it's supposed to have 59,000 miles on it only yeah I know only huh only 59,000 miles on it so but it looks like it's uh, seen better days maybe that's from shipping I don't know it's uh, I don't know if you can tell, see that, but the finish on these intake manifold is rather sparkly. It's more metallic than I'm used to seeing on these intake manifolds. It's kind of hard to see on the phone there, but yeah, you can see right there. That's all sparkle. Which is really bizarre. I'll have to get this, these intake manifolds powder coated too. But, yep. This is the new project. So over the coming months, weeks, I'll end up here we go, in there. I'll end up taking this thing apart all the way down to the block, take the valve covers off, take the heads off, get it just down to the block and see what the inside looks like. And then depending on that, put all new th new things in it and get this thing running in something. I haven't figured that out yet. But there it is. All right, before I get a little too excited about this engine, remember how this is a little bent? 
can see right there. So that needs that pulley needs to be replaced. This idler pulley, which is no no big deal. You just take that bolt out and replace the idler pulley. This the water pump pulley is on the other hand is also difficult to turn. So what I'm gonna do right now, so I'm gonna see if this thing even turns over. That was all those plugs, so I'm probably gonna shoot some of those plugs out. <clears throat> yep. Well, it turns over. Well, since it turns over, I'm gonna take off this water pump just to see what it looks like in there. I took off oil filter housing and you can see it's rather dry, almost like it was cleaned. And the filter looks okay. It's all in one piece, there's no chunks, but it kinda of does smell like solvent for some reason. So I'm gonna take off that water pump just to see what the coolant jacket looks like. Well, the front of this engine does look a lot more simple than the 119, although the AC compressor, power steering pump, or actually AC compressor, power steering pump, alternator, secondary air injection pump, well, those things aren't installed, so there's four more pulleys that aren't there, so. One of those bolts is not like the other. They're the same on that side though. So next we gotta take this out with the thermostat. We're gonna take this off, that off, then we gotta take all these bolts right here off. So we can take the thermostat out and then this bolts it to the top of the water pump. Doesn't look terrible inside the uh, oil cap. Cam has a slight film of oil on it so it's not completely dry. Does have some curious scoring or marks. There you go. On the cam itself, you know if you can see that or not. Weird. Don't worry, it'll get replaced. Gotta take that off. Thermostat's a little crusty. You can see some of the dust that dropped down in there when I took it off. Well, it looks a little crusty right there, but inside it doesn't look too, you can see right there, it doesn't look too terrible, so I can get focused. Yeah, nothing bad. Maybe some light corrosion in there, but it's bone dry. There's the shaft of the water pump. Well, that's as far as I'm gonna take it apart for today. You have to take off this to get your water pump off. So, when I get it back to the house, I'll take this off, we'll continue taking the whole thing, whole freaking thing apart. Well, thank you for watching and uh, welcome back. Sorry I haven't had a video in a while, but now I'm gonna have videos regularly again and I'm gonna show you the process of taking apart and pretty much completely rebuilding a 120 Mercedes V12. And as always, thank you for watching. Make sure you give me that thumbs up, hit subscribe, and hit the notification icon so you get notifications when I post a new video. Thanks for watching.